това, което беше тази нощ. И вятърът повлече своите гласни струни през всичките дворове, цветове, като ни на нощта. Светлината шествие от огън. Светлината на гробовете душата взела. Защото свещите са тъничка душа. Пламъкът на зъбен, като нож за хляба. Издължава се и свършва с остър ъгъл. Пак танцуват като калугерки звездите. Тези вечни пеперуди на нощта. Която всичко знае и гадае по звездите. Тези вечни пеперуди на нощта. Magandang Umaga, Magandang Gabi. If I was a dog, I'd be a mutt, a mixed breed, a mixed bag, a tail wagging, face licking Rubik's Cube, like if you crossed a pug, a poodle, and a three legged Shih Tzu. Magandang Umaga, Magandang Gabi. The recipe for my muttness would call for unequal parts Irish, Scottish, Spanish, German, Czech, and possibly Portuguese. All chopped, sliced, and diced, blended in a cosmic Cuisinart topped with two heaping mounds of second-generation Filipino, like purple scoops of ube ice cream in a bowl of homemade apple crumble. Magandang umaga, magandang gabi. How much Filipino people ask, incredulous, cocking their heads in disbelief, this way and that, this way and that, wagging a finger in my face as if catching me in a prevarication of my Pinoy pedigree. Magandang umaga, magandang gabi. If I was a science experiment, a lab rat in a maze, or a rhesus monkey in a cage, poked and prodded, pinched and punched, dissected and disemboweled, swirled in a centrifuge and spun into genetic goulash, burbling away in Pyrex beakers on a sterilized countertop, cluttered with Bunsen burners, polypropylene petri dishes, and stereoscopic microscopes, I'd be one and a half liters of German here, a pint of check there, and three more tablespoons of Spanish for the test tube in the back. I'd be divvied up like that until arriving at the ingredient in question. Magandang umaga, magandang gabi. Two men in bleached white lab coats would linger over imprecise calculations, knowing from my papers that my father's paternal grandfather, a shopkeeper from Hamburg, hence my surname long since de-umlauted, a purveyor of military caps and patches, arms and ammunition, menswear and sporting goods, conjoined in holy interracial matrimony with a flower of the archipelago, a Filipina most fair. Magandang umaga, magandang gabi. This all occurred in Manila, on or around Escolta Street, the Wall Street of Asia, the Queen of Streets, where my grandparents courted and where my father was reared until age 11, when the imperial occupation forced the family to flee from the city to the jungle near the muddy Marikina. My young dad's pet pig, stuffed with lemongrass, slow roasted in a charcoal pit, its inflated bladder presented to the teary-eyed boy as a blood-red balloon, a token of forgiveness. Magandang Umaga, Magandang Gabi. 
Lola and Lola, with three tykes in tow, soon waved goodbye to 7,641 islands, securing passage to San Francisco aboard the SS Monterey, while dancing linguistically between English, Spanish, and Tagalog. Magandang umaga, magandang gabi. A language I never learned, always within earshot. Lyrical pricklings, murmurs, susurrations, whirs, intermittent image imp, flashes, dreams, star stutter, coruscating crumbs, effervescent cacophonous things shimmering, Cortical canticle cascade. Start. Start to write a poem. Migrations, McAllen, Texas, 2019. Lantana and Salvia, Delphinium, Thistle and Heather, move in the still heat of late August. 
a garden grows outside our window, waits for the transient monarchs, the ruby-throated hummingbirds. In Billy Hassel's Monarch Butterflies over the Rio Grande, hundreds of wings the color of sunset move across the sky. A kaleidoscope of light that pours over sheer walled canyons, volcanic rock. The cavernous stretch of river becomes a permeable border which is no border. But the flight that beauty makes, turning gray rock, gray water to orange light. Hummingbirds travel thousands of miles, escaping the violence, the poverty of weather. Men and women and their children travel miles seeking asylum. They wait in lines or cages in El Paso, Clint, McAllen. They lose their luggage, their language, the children they carry. No milk, no blankets, no soap, no songs. They arrive by any means necessary. We hold our children close. Watch flight out the window at a distance in a garden. Across the Rio Grande, sometimes with deadly consequences. Wingless, they who flee must swim the river. Wingless, they who flee must cross the desert. O oh God of many names, see their flight. Lift and hold them in the cleft of the rock. Lele, <laughs> Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Good luck and Godspeed. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6.
The priest washes Christ's blood off his hands with water. The doctor washes the patient's blood off his hands with water. The policeman washes the criminal's blood off his hands with blood. The soldier washes the enemy's blood off his hands with blood. But with what water, with what blood do I wash away? That chapter from the Annals of World History. At Houston Space Center, in low spirits, I watched the moon through a gigantic telescope. The human footsteps on the grey pale beach of the Sea of Tranquility. There they are. The terrible proof of that shameful night. Traces that no brush will ever sweep away. Sister Moon, the light reflecting pearl floating in space. The American astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin and Collins raped you on the 21st of July in the summer of love 69. You were interfered with, you were visited, you were walked upon, you were photographed. They drilled samples from the walls of your womb. Pieces of you were brought to earth as souvenirs for scientists. You were left with boot marks. A stupid flag stuck on your pubic mound and the shame. Your hymen was displayed as R. Nixon's scalp in the White House. NASA telegraphed the news around the world. The American astronauts have raped a planet. Children were named after them. Airports, satellites, hospitals, schools, creches, streets, buildings, roads. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Moon, you forgave America. Night after night, you rise fully ripened above Arizona. Virgin, you who are a wife and your mother's mother in the Zuma Rite of the Hopi Indians. On the roof of the hippie commune in the Sierra Nevada you stand. Fate with the power to join or cut the lifelines of humans in your hands across the whole federation. Blue Moon, you saw Elvis standing alone down and out in Graceland. Still, you are the nightlight for the gold digger in the Mackenzie Mountains. Your beauty outshines the neon signs on the roofs of Manhattan. And yet, and yet, the priest washes Christ's blood off his hands with water. The doctor washes the patient's blood off his hands with water. The policeman washes the criminal's blood off his hands with blood. The soldier washes the enemy's blood off his hands with blood. But with what water, with what blood do I wash away? That chapter from the Annals of World History.
Liu liu vale ka uka o ka ho la lele Mau ka ma ka i o ka papala i e E ko mo, e ko mo aku ho i au ma loko I nga ka pu unui o vaho nei la e He anu e, he anu e, e ko e ko e vale no A e Our world is lovely in different ways, hung with beauty and works of hands. I saw a strange machine, made for motion, slide against the sand, shrieking as it went. It walked swiftly on its only foot, this odd-shaped monster, traveled in an open country without seeing, without arms or hands, with many ribs and its mouth in its middle. Its work is useful and welcome, for it loads its belly with food and brings abundance to men, to poor and to rich, paying its tribute year after year. Solve this riddle if you can, and unravel its name. Despite our orthodoxy, we have come to blight. Raymond, Duke of the Loose, has conceded faith to heresy. Might our Father's innocence bless us and grant indulgence from your excesses. Go with peace and ravage longer duck. It is our position to not fail St. Peter's pontificate. It is the service of the pious to serve the sea. Those heretics have sentenced us to further and endanger noble privileges of our piety. It is my duty to exercise the Occitan Berbers, to exonerate the white and black. And protect the apostolic mark on Narbonne, Béziers and Aix-en-Provence. We are without a bulk of practitioners, perfecting in peace in this land by the sea. Is it sacrilegious to look for salvation without any blood? It is, we, 
you are but Western Saracens to Arno Amalric. You fought. As Orc, we died. After the soldiers of peace left, there still were questions. What to do with the temples and hospice? Why was the word of our Lord still in theft? Converse in waiting, no blood for devotion. It was only the Podesta who could act in malice. Caedite eos, novitenim dominus qui sunt eius. Kill them. The Lord knows those that are his own. O oh Lord, on those who are suffering persecution for the faith, the spirit of the fortitude, to unite them inseparably with Christ and his church. Arouse in the hearts of those who call the Father At 15, I was what's called bookish. I had a recurring dream of an owl lecturing on the Surrealists. And I always woke from it happy. I spent that entire summer running the projector in the library basement. Silent movies for the kids on vacation. Cold coffee and fritters on a table for the grown-ups. The films were fragile and old and everyone laughed when Buster Keaton fell in love. I had the whole day to think and my thoughts all felt sculpted. I worked that hard on each one, chiseled and rasped. I spent evenings reading in my room, listening to Thunder. Sometimes a firefly would stray through the broken screen and I'd wake in the night to its beacon, its clumsy flight. I'd say, oh, Buster Keaton, I'm still too young and our love is forbidden. Your body's a lamp and I'm a boat far out at sea. Can you wait for me, my moonbeam, my daffodil? Blink once, if you will.
Butterflies coming home soon. Yes, butterflies coming home soon. How soon? Soon. I can't wait. I know. It's been a long time. It's been a while, but not too long. I remember last time she danced. Do you? I do. Why do you ask? She really looked like a butterfly. She did. There you were, all of a sudden spinning vulnerably on the ground, all flesh and blood and awkwardness, unsteady on these limbs you'd found. Then later, an expectancy. You hung there on the verge of adulthood, achievement, greatness, something wound up about to splurge. When you are high upon the sea, your glorious sails full of wind, your doom black chassis body deep in the destructive element. Just then, when you were deep in dance, somebody took a photograph, and now that all our dance is done, it signs you like an autograph. And now, what can we tell you if your big bright wings can fly no more? A flaw was found upon the screens your dreams had blent their colours for. I must tell you something. About what? That day. What day? The day of her dress rehearsal. The day of her accident. Yes, what about it? She was so close. And I was so close. Close to what, old man? Perfection. Perfection. It's so hard to draw legs. So hard. The muscles, the bones. Not as hard as learning to walk again, old man. So, where is the drawing now? It doesn't matter. What matters then, old man? I haven't finished it. I don't have much time. Finish then. Butterflies coming home soon. Yes. Butterflies coming home soon. How soon? Soon.
the universe, like you, is but the drowsy arm of stillness, spinning gently weird circles in his sleep. Voices that swim through the music, offering something forbidden, close up, the dark arms of the horn player, his skin fitting him sleek as a shark suit, clasping the sax, lifting it, the sound descends in long sizzling lines like wires arcing out, empty eyes sliding up and back to the halo of the spot, motes drifting. makes her want to run, like it could tear her apart, a man at each limb, lifting her off the bed at the Ote Mesa Motel, all of them dressed in black, and the music never letting up its dazzling, spun-out phrases. she could run she would under the shadowy arcade as the camera pans wide but she's hobbled by her tight skirt the staccato of high heels tapping a rhythm on the uneven street her breasts heaving under the cashmere dog collar of pearls around her perfect neck while the sea crashes in the near distance she's doomed by music, cloudburst of percussion on the windshield, then silence. The camera wheels around and Bates Motel appears, lit up on the sun.
way every aperture turns into another eye, and the shower won't stop running until long after she's died. We know she's doomed, cords shifting darkly, but she persists, carrying on with her share of sorrow, changing into black lingerie, and skipping town if she has to, ending finally there, wherever the heart of trouble happens to be. The Rock and the Stars The stars sit in the sky, blinking, indifferent, far away. Too far to hit with a rock, too far to ever reach really, so why should I care? They insist on being inspiring. Maybe if I could almost hit one with a rock, or we discovered warp speed, or a wormhole soon, like in the movies. What the fuck do you want from me, stars? A poem maybe, but I feel like you've had enough poems, so what else are you good for? Ah, the impossible, always tempting me to reach for a rock or build a spaceship to look for a wormhole. Fool that I am. de luz apenas un tremor las follas apegada de navia una sensación de abrigo que abrolla do lluvia ensancha o silencio asolagado de setembro quisen adivinar así o seu fluir calado una sombra a tarifa de ser, a vez, para augas y fervenza. Poboar e despoboar de ecos, os espazos que nos construyen. Recoller o pouso que deixamos neles. Elevarnos da man, cara o gurgullar das augas. Ninguén coñece a voz da barqueira, pero de certo o seu remar mantén en marcha o discorrer do río, o seu profundo verdor. Queda de nos una luz prendida en la memoria de nosotros. Un crepitar maimiño que a corrente no logra arrastrar. <tose> 